Alrighty, Shabbat Shalom, Miss Baka. This is Maureen Medea Yahoo and Yashrael want to welcome you to another live broadcast of My Living Branch. So as we're allowing space for everyone to log on, Shabbat Shalom to all of my Miss Baka. We appreciate you for being here with us. It is another great Shabbat. <laughs> so today, we're going to be going over Project Cover Your Mouth Part 3. <laughs> so, I pray that you're ready. Um, this lesson was one of those lessons that the Father, you know, uh, I operate and kind of wait to hear from the Father. You know, I, you know, everybody's a little different. You got to know your calling and what the Father is, how he works with you. So for me, sometimes I can just jump into a lesson but what I try to do is wait to hear from him. <clears throat> and that's because he knows what his people need and what direction we need to take. And I have even been in instances where I've had to wait right down to the last minute and he would give me something. So by no means is it something fun uh, when I say fun, you know, for someone that's just learning how to operate like that, it can be nerve wracking. But I've been doing this for years. So I trust uh, that he will always speak and speak on time. So that's why I've learned to patiently wait to hear his voice and give me direction on which way to go. <clears throat> now we do have... A lot of uh, good people in the stream. All of all of you are endeavoring to be good. So we just uh, pray that the Father would uh, continue to show you favor. And so we're going to have a good lesson today. And it's very interesting because... As I was doing this lesson, um, I had when I had finished and just pondering, he gave me what we're going to do for our next challenge. And the next challenge is going to be something else. It's going to really test you and bring bring everything full circle. So let's pray, Ms. Cobb. We won't belabor and we'll get right into what the Father has to say today. And I hope I'm sounding okay. I haven't seen anybody out there say uh, you sound low. So I'm just taking for granted at this particular juncture that everything's sounding good. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Elohim Malach HaAlam. Father, we say Toda Rabbah for... This Shabbat, we thank Toda Rabbah for this lesson. We're asking you, Father, to speak to our hearts. And, Father, as we continue to press and we continue to fortify ourselves to be more like you, we're asking you, Father, to continue to give us all the things that we need. Fear of Elohim, wisdom, memory, recall, uh, all the things that are necessary in order for us to be more like you. Father, we thank you for every trial, for every tribulation. We thank you for all the things that you have allowed us to experience. Because anything that you take us through or allow us to go through is designed to make us better. And we're asking you, Father, to increase us in a good way. Increase us to be more like you. We say Toda Rabbah for all of your goodness. In the name of Mashiach Yahusha, Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. 
All righty, Miss Baka. So let's see what we are working with. So we're working on part three today. Let's just do a little housekeeping. We know that this is going to be your new challenge. We already know the dates. Um, and we are continue with the lesson flow. I did post the agenda goals out there on the website. So you can go and check it out. You will see it under the file section. The same place that you uh, got the 30 day when, when we were doing the uh, prayer challenge. So the instructions are right there. But I'll um, just so you'll see. I'll take you there so you can see where they're located. So once you log on. If you come down. You will see a file section. Latest files. So if you click on this. It will give you the PDF. And like I said, I'm not trying to give a whole bunch of uh, instructions on fasting. That's where it comes in. You listen to the lessons and you apply the lessons. So we are set to begin on the third. Now, for those of you that might not have been tuning in, Okay, it's going to be the 3rd through the 17th. And this is what we're trying to accomplish. Okay, depending on the level that you're at. So I tried to give some leeway because I want uh, people to participate. I don't want to discourage. Uh, this is a, a growing thing, you know. So if you're a beginner, you're going to pick two days out of the 14 days. Preferably a day that you're off and that you can focus doing your fasting time. So if you're a beginner, it's 4 to 11 hours. Okay. Um, two days. So if you're off during the week, let's say you're off Thursday, Friday. Okay. You can pick one week. You can pick Thursday. Next week you can pick Thursday or however you want to do it. Now, if you're intermediate, you're going to pick two days and you're going to fast two. I mean, you're going to fast 12 to 23 hours just for two days, two days out of the 14. Now, if you advance, going to push you a little bit more, 24 hours, three days out of the 14. So I'm sure myself and several others will be doing this particular one now it's not back-to-back -back days uh, and we do have the 17th which is a in the US is a holiday so that might be a good day for you to pick for one of your three days just giving you a helpful hint okay so now what we want to get in today I want to talk to you about fasting, but I'm coming from a different perspective and I'm using a narrative that the Mashiach used um, and his disciples experience because you might not think that you are affected, you know, your environment affects you, but it does affect your faith. And I'm going to walk you through this so that you can see how it affects your faith. Remember, the game hasn't changed since the beginning of time. So the enemy, is he still uses the same strategy. Nothing changes. So let's start with Mark. Uh, and now, just before this, they had experienced the Mount Transfiguration where they had seen Eliyahu, Elijah, and they had seen Moses or Moshe. And they had said, okay, we're going to uh, build a tent for you too. So, what, what we have to work on here 
is now they're coming to a different experience. And I do see a message where it says, um, we keep losing you. So I'm not sure what that is about. So the only thing I can do is, you know, I have it recording, so I'll just keep rolling and hopefully it'll straighten itself out. If not, I will put it up on YouTube. So, in the Mark, the ninth chapter in the 14th verse, and coming to the taught ones, he saw a large crowd around them and the scribes disputing or questioning with them. Now, I want you to notice people can and will affect your faith if you are not careful. If you are not careful, people can affect your faith. So let's look at Romans. So if they're affecting your faith, what are they actually affecting? This is what you have to ask yourself. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of Allahim. That's scriptures. So as we see, if they're affecting the faith, your faith, they are they are affecting the word of Allahim in you. Okay, so many of us are confronted with disputing. Okay, and notice that it says in the verse in the scribes disputing and questioning with them. So they are being affected by others and what's being said. So we've got to ask ourselves, okay, how do we not be affected? And that goes back to my previous lessons. Not only are you covering your mouth, but you're covering all the other openings that feed your sight, your ears, and your nose. Those are covered as well. Okay? And you have to remember when it comes to disputing, in Psalms 119, verse 89, Lament forever, O Yahuwah, thy word is settled in heaven. So disputing is a discussion and investigation jointly, um, you know, to question, to inquire. And what you have to notice is that when the enemy is doing it or propagating it, it's never a good thing. So the environment has, okay, an effect. Now keep in mind that this is not first time that this has happened this has happened from the beginning because when we go to Genesis 3 verse 1 now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahuwah Elohim had made and he said unto the woman yea has Elohim said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden so the deadly questions disputing questioning it comes to rob you of the word of Allahim. So this is some of the things you have to be on guard for that will cause your faith to diminish or be reduced. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of every fruit of the tree of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Allahim has said, you should not Eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die, for Elohim does know. In the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be open, 
and you shall be as mighty ones knowing good and evil so you can see here what the enemy is doing and his seed the questions come to attack the word of Allahim that should have been planted and cultivated in your life so you have to be careful okay now let's keep going mark 9 verse 15 and immediately when all the crowd saw him they were greatly astonished and running near greeted him and he asked the scribes what are you disputing with them and one of the crowd answering said teacher okay now this is a, now the attack is coming a different way first the attack was questions with words now the thing that's going to affect their faith because remember this this is all pointing back to his Talmudim or disciples it's going to be what they see now one of the crowd answering said teacher I brought my son who was who has a dumb spirit and wherever he seizes him he throws him down notice this is something you can see he foams at the mouth he gnashes his teeth and he wastes away and I spoke to your taught ones that they should cast him out but they were not able okay so here again something uh, what they heard affected their faith what they saw affected their faith and let's let's jump over um, We'll go to Second Peter, the second chapter, and we we'll, we'll use the scriptures for this one. Uh, let's see, Second Peter, second chapter, first verse, and and I want you to see this because you think that what you see can affect you, but it can affect you, and it can affect you in a in a mighty way. Okay. So look here. We'll start with verse 1. But there also came to be false prophets among the people. As also among you there shall be false teachers. Who shall secretly bring in destructive hearsay. And deny the master who brought you. Bought you. Bringing swift destructions to themselves. And many shall follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And in greed with fashioned words they shall use you for gain. From of old their judgment does not linger and their destruction does not slumber. For if Elohim did not spare the messengers who sinned, but sent them to, and in the regular version they'll say Tarsus, Tartarus, and delivered them into chains of darkness to keep for judgment. And he did not spare the uh, world of old, but preserved Noah, a proclaimer of righteousness, and seven others, bringing in the flood on the world of the wicked and having reduced to ashes the city of Sodom and Amorah condemned them to destruction having made them an example to those who afterward would live wicked wickedly uh, and rescued now this is where I want you to pay attention righteous lot who was oppressed with the indecent behavior of the lawless okay 
this is key right here for day after day that righteous man dwelling among them tortured his righteous being by seeing and hearing their lawless works then Yahuwah knew how to rescue the revent ones from trial and to keep the unrighteous unto the day of judgment to be punished. And most of those who walking after the flesh in filthy lust and despising authority, bold, headstrong, speaking evil of the esteemed ones, whereas messengers who were greater in strength and power did not bring a slanderous accusation against them before the master. Now what I wanted you to see, he tortured, and the King James will probably say vexed his righteous soul being by seeing and hearing their lawless works. Okay, and this is this is what I'm getting at here. Your environment has an effect on you. Okay, and it had an effect on the faith of the disciples okay mark 9 verse 19 and he answered him and said oh unbelieving or faithless generation how long shall i be with you how long shall i put up with you bring him to me okay while the word is trying to be built up in your life there are Forces inside and outside of you that are trying to destroy that word in you. Okay. And notice Psalms 119 verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Now, keep in mind, the enemy is trying to chip away at what? The word of Elohim inside of you. And this is why we're talking about fasting, because we're trying to give you a tool that's going to help you. Okay, this is one of the tools that's going to help refine you. Okay, Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 15. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vine. See, it's the look. See, we're looking for the big things, but these questions... And, and your environment chips away. Can chip away at your faith if you're not careful. For our vines have tender grapes. Okay, then we'll keep reading. Um, Mark 9, verse 20. So they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit threw him into convulsions. Falling on the ground, he rolled about, foaming with the mouth. Okay? But Mashiach was the walking word of Elohim. And he asked his father, how long has he been like this? He said, from childhood. And often, he has thrown him both in the fire and in the water to destroy him. But if it is at all possible for you have compassion on us and help us and Yahushua said to him if you are able to believe all is possible to him who believes and immediately the father of the child cried and said with tears I believe master or sovereign help my unbelief <coughs> so I want you to notice that in this particular passage when something has had time to grow and has had time to get deep roots you know it's not like just trying to go pull a sapling that just came up out the ground you can just pluck that up but if something has deep roots you can't just go pluck it up there's a different type of authority a different type of uh, level of faith that is required okay 
Then Mark 9, 25, and when Yahushua saw the crowd uh, came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to him, You deaf and dumb spirit, I order you, come out of him and never again enter into him. And crying out and convulsing him, it came out of him, and he became as one dead. So that many said that he was dead. But Yahusha, taking him by the hand, lifted him up and he arose. Now, notice he the, the authority, by the authority that he was speaking. That he rebuked the unclean spirit. But some said, go, go look at other verses in the Brit Hadashah. And... This rebuking seems to be around a lot of when he had to do this. When you see the instances, you will see instances of little faith or lack of faith or not trusting the word. Okay, look in Matthew 8 26. And he said unto them, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was great calm. Okay? So, notice notice what was in the passage. Their faith was in question. Okay? And here it again is in Mark chapter 8, verse 32. And he spake that saying openly. And Peter, Kepha, took him. And began to rebuke him. But when he was turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter or Kepha, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savest not the things that be of Allahim, but the things that be of men. <laughs> so, if faith cometh by hearing, so his faith was in question because. He had been telling him all along that he was going to have to die. He was going to have to suffer and die. But now Kepha saying, oh, that's not going to be so. So sometimes when we get our own agendas, it causes us to lose track of what Allahim purpose and intent is. So we got to be careful. Our faith is affected. Our faith can be sidetracked. By our environment, by our feelings and our desires. But we always got to remember what the Mashiach in his famous words, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. This is what we're looking for. This is what we're aiming for. <laughs> now, this is what I been working to get to in verse 28 and we came into the house his taught ones asked him separately why were we unable to cast him out he said unto them it is impossible for this kind pay attention this kind notice what he asks during the discourse, he asked the father, how long had this spirit, this dumb spirit, been in the boy? And the father told him since he was a child, since a young. So this thing has had time to grow and to be rooted and to become a stronghold in the in the life of the child and it was such a stronghold that it affected the faith see remember the scribes affected they were questioning the Talmudim or the disciples but when they tried to call this spirit out their faith was affected because this spirit didn't respond to them 
Why didn't it? Why? It has to be because of what they were hearing and what they were seeing. And we've got to be so careful that we don't let what we hear and see on a day-to-day -day basis affect our faith. But notice what he tells them. And this is why we're embarking on this fast. It's impossible for this time, this kind, to come out except through prayer and fasting. <laughs> okay? Prayer and fasting. Now, this is going to be our last little portion. We're going to talk about and that word, it should say, I thought I got all the slides, but I must have missed this one. Um, creation of hunger. Creation of hunger. And the father, uh, as I was waiting, I had finished the first part. This came to my Ruach. The father put it there and I was like, okay, father, I see where you're going. So let's read it. Then was Yahusha led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Ahasatan. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungry, hungered. Now, there are two types of hunger. Righteousness and unrighteousness. And I'm not talking about physical hunger at this point. Okay. There's, remember it says, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled and if you remember righteousness is guarding his commandments then there's a one that appears righteous but is actually unrighteous not everyone that saith unto me sovereign sovereign shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven both hungers will exist. The question is, which one will you seek to fill? Okay, D did you hear what I just said? When you fast, both hungers will exist. The question is, which one will you seek to fill? Now, I want you to notice here in Deuteronomy uh, 30 verse 19. Let's read it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse, cursing. Therefore choose life that both thy and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love Yahuwah the Elohim, and thou mayest obey his voice, that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and length of thy days, and thou mayest dwell in the land which Yahuwah swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, to give them. Okay, hunger, righteousness, and we'll, we'll go there because I, I want you to see it. Deuteronomy 6 verse 25. Six, verse 25 okay it is righteousness for us when we guard to do all his commands command uh, guard all this command before Yahuwah our Elohim as he has commanded us okay so we see that so 
by hungering for righteousness, you receive you receive life and blessing. Okay, now look at the hunger for unrighteousness. Let's go to Psalms verse 10. Okay, and notice is Lamed, a staff, which points to teaching. Why do you stand afar off, O Yahuwah, hiding in times of distress? In arrogance, the wrongdoer hotly pursue the poor. They are caught by the schemes which they devise. For the wrongdoer boasts of his craving, and the greedy one cursed and despised Yahuwah. In the pride of his face, the wrongdoer does not seek him. In all his thoughts, there is is no Allahim. So those that just totally disregard his commandments. Even though they can know what they say. Dealing in unrighteousness. Okay. And then if you come over to Corinthians. I thought this was a good companion. The sixth chapter. And the ninth verse. Shaul plainly tells you, do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the reign of Elohim? Do not be deceived. Neither those who whore or idolaters or adulterers or effeminate or homosexuals, nor thieves, nor greedy of gain, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers shall, shall inherit the reign of Elohim. That is pretty point blank. So it, it goes into unrighteousness and gives you. Because all these things are against the commandments. So they have no regard for the commandments. So in that part, they receive death and they receive a curse. Okay. Now, look at verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the son of Elohim, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Elohim. I want you to go to Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 1. Because what we're trying to do is get the most out of the hunger that's created through fasting. But we don't want to look at the physical hunger. You got to look at a different type of hunger. You got to thirst for a different type of hunger. This is the hunger that's going to help you get closer to him. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do and that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which you swore unto your fathers and thou shall remember all the way which you who the Elohim led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you to prove you to know what is in thine heart whether Thou would, wouldest keep his commandments or no? Look, listen to this. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. Okay. Now when he suffered them to hunger. He didn't feed. He fed them with something different. Because it, what he fed them. Was going to challenge them. Either to grow in faith. Or to fall by the wayside. And he fed them with manna which thou knowest not. Neither did the fathers know. That he might uh, make thee know that man. Here the quote again. Doth not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yahuwah doth man live. So 
we got to think of fasting on a different level. When the hunger comes, you got to start thinking about what you really hunger for. Because his instruction can sustain you. But disobeying his instruction will destroy you. So notice if when you go back to Genesis 3, after Eve or Hawa's discourse with the enemy, it said she saw that the tree was good for food. So instead of having the hunger for his word and what he had spoken, that hunger changed to a physical hunger. It changed to things that dealt with the flesh, lust of the flesh and pride of life. So these are the things that fasting is going to bring up. And that you got to remember how to deal with. Okay. Now let's keep going. Then the devil taketh him up into the set apart city. Set him on a pinnacle of the temple. And saith unto him. If thou be the son of Elohim. Cast thyself down. For it is written. He shall give his angels or messengers charge concerning thee. Okay. I put something there because I want you to be able to plug this in. And in their hand, they shall bear thee up, lest thou at any time dash thy foot against the stone. Yahusha said unto him, it is written again, you shall not tempt Yahuwah the Elohim. So let's look at the missing part. I put it in red here so you can see it. To keep thee in all thy ways. Mm. So for him to throw himself down would be tempting because if he's keeping you in all your ways, he's keeping you in proper alignment with what the word of Elohim says. And in Deuteronomy 6 and 16, you shall not tempt. Yahuwah your Elohim as you tempted him in Masa. Okay. Now what is what is tempting? Let's let's get a more a better context. Because when you tempt something, it means you don't hearken unto the word. Okay. You can misquote it, leave something out. Try to cause it to fit your purpose instead of what it actually says. Okay, let's read Numbers 14 verse 22. Because all these men which have seen my esteem and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice, Surely they shall not see the land which I swore unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. So there's a huge correlation between tempting and not hearkening. Not listening to his voice. Okay. And what is his, where does his voice come from? When he speaks it, it's his word. So make sure that during this time of fasting that you use scripture correctly. Don't leave something out. Because when you leave something out, then it, it, it's no longer his word. It becomes your word. When you add something to it, it's no longer his word. It becomes your word. So we've got to work more diligently at keeping his word instead of letting feelings, emotions, and opinions influence. If he said it, then it is so. Okay, and then we go on 
to Matthew 4, verse 8. Again, the devil taketh them up into an exceeding high mountain, and show him all the kingdoms of the world, and the esteem of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if you will fall down and worship me. Then said Yahushua unto him, give, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, <coughs> You shall worship Yahuwah the Elohim, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, messengers or angels came and ministered unto him. So, I want you to notice that if you go back, that both of these came from the same area that the Mashiach was quoting. Deuteronomy 6, chapter 6, where it says, You shall fear Yahuwah the Elohim and serve him and swear by his name. And you should not go after other mighty ones. The mighty ones are the people who are around you. For Yahuwah your Elohim is in your midst is a jealous El. Lest the anger of Yahuwah your Elohim be kindled against you. And he destroy you from off the face of the earth. <laughs> so who was Satan trying to get him to go after? He wanted him to fall down and worship him. So Mashiach reaches back to Deuteronomy 6.13. So what is all this doing? If you're hungry for Elohim, try fasting. But even in fasting, you got to make sure that your objectives are clear. Now we got one more lesson that we're going to do before we start um, our fasting. On next Shabbat, we got one lesson. So I'm just urging you to see what's going on here and see that doing fasting it's going to be a time of challenging you. And you've got to figure out. You know which hunger you're going after. Are you going to worry about the physical hunger? Or are you going to hunger after righteousness? He that hungers and thirsts for righteousness. Shall be filled. Because the hunger is going to be created. It's going to be there. You've got to figure out. Which one you going after. And then fill it. And then this will also help you. Because remember. He said this kind. Cometh out. But none but by fasting and prayer. So some of the things that you might have to have dealt with. That had some spirits behind it. Now you'll be in a better position to take authority. Because the word of Elohim now is rooted in you. And you haven't let what you see and what you hear affect your faith. Where he's saying to you, oh, ye of little faith. But you, as Jude has said, you have built up on your most set apart faith. Praying in the Ruach HaKodesh. So fasting is going to help you to connect. To the right purpose and to the right path if you allow it but you have to have a willing heart it's not going to be without challenges and you've got to look beyond like I said the physical hunger because remember in the wilderness he suffered them to hunger why did he do that because there was a different hunger. Because remember, Mashiach was sustained 40 days and 40 nights. Moshe was sustained 40 days and 40 nights being his presence. There's a different hunger that he desires you to have. And that you have, in order for you to see that, you got to move beyond the physical hunger that will exist when you fast. 
All right, Mr. Bacab, we're going to pray. And again, my apologies to, to those. Um, I know the stream, uh, something's not acting right because I don't see anyone commenting. But I will be uploading this to YouTube um, shortly. So that if you didn't, weren't able to see it, I will be posting it for everyone to see. As we pray, Father, as we prepare our hearts and minds for the challenge that's coming up in the coming weeks, the fast, I pray that you put our, put our thoughts in the right place and cause us to reap the benefits of fasting, to see the benefit of a different hunger, which is your righteousness, is why we are covering our mouth because we desire to hear from you. We desire your presence. And we believe and know that you can sustain us by your word. Father, I thank you for every person that's going to embark on this. Father, I pray that through this process, you give them wisdom on the things that affect their faith what they're seeing and what they're hearing. So, Father, they'll be fortified. They'll be ready for service. They'll be more like you. They'll be more effective in what they're doing for you. Father, and I pray that we would move self out the way and just be closer to you. I say, Toda Rabbah, Father, for this lesson today. In the name of Mashiach, Yahusha, Halel to Yahuwah, Amin. And if you have prayer requests you can, or questions, you can email me at info at mylivingbranch.org. All righty, Ms. McCall, um, Passover, and we'll be here soon. So we know uh, I have uh, tools for your children, for you to work with them. It's the Hebrew Passover story for children and the Hebrew Ten Commandments. So you can simply go to Amazon and you can... Search for them and order them right there. You can get it in paper or in Kindle edition. And if you would like to become a part of our bookmark of witnessing team, you can do so. Uh, www.bm.hebrewfoundation.org And put in your information. Make sure you give me your complete mailing address. And also if you would like to check out our bookstore, you can do that. It is store.hebrewfoundation.org And finally, if you would like to support us, you can do so. You can do so online. There's also a donation button right there in the stream. You can also uh, support us through Cash App and PayPal. And there's also a physical address. Now, if you, um, Father, puts it on your heart, support us. But most of all, make sure you send up your prayers for us so that we can continue to do the Father's will. Okay, I see people are um, commenting. So, uh, were you able to hear the whole stream, or what? What happened? Did it continue to go in and out? Just, just curious. And either way. Either way, I'm going to be uploading it to YouTube here shortly. So you'll be able to listen to the full version. So what, what I did, I wanted to, I know how these things, um, the platform, sometimes when you've got a message and, and it's very important, man. These these uh these me the, the the platform goes haywire, so that's why I'm like okay, I I've, I've had enough experience to know hey just keep working through it because stopping and trying to restart the platform if it's a problem with the internet platform, it's gonna continue to be a problem, so you just continue 
Um, and fortunately, I have a recording that I do that I can upload. So um, you should be able to get that within the next 45 minutes to a half an hour. So it's good. Uh, make sure you go back and listen to the full lesson. It will definitely help. All right, Miss Bakal, you know we love you. This is Moray Medea Yahoo saying unto you, Shabbat Shalom. And let's make this the best Shabbat ever. Shabbat Shalom, Miss Bakal.